Hey there YouTube, and welcome to Practical Printing 3D. In today's video, I will be going over the process used to design and develop a 3D printed rope walk. The process of making rope is commonly believed to have started around ancient Egyptian times. However, the process of twisting three strands together with a device similar to the one in this video called a rope walk is believed to have started around medieval times. On a rope walk, most of the force is applied in the horizontal direction. Due to the way layers are stacked on top of each other in the 3D printing process, the part is weakest in the direction of force applied perpendicular to that on a thin object. To combat this issue, the main structural piece needed to be designed in a way that allowed it to be printed horizontally in one piece. The easiest way to make a strong design is to make a solid square plate with holes drilled in it. However, I didn't want to do that for the purpose of reducing print time as well as reducing material cost. I had initially made the design to use 3D printed bearings to let the gears turn a little easier. However, in the end I found out that that didn't work real well. As I started off on this project, I was excited to get involved and start using my 3D printer more. So I initially printed the bearings by themselves. The bearings worked quite well. However, they didn't fit into the gears as I wanted them to and I didn't feel like changing the design of the gears. Though I wasted a lot of material printing the bearings, not all hope was lost. While I had rushed into the design and started printing the bearings without finishing the initial support structure, I learned a lot of good lessons through the process of printing the bearing. Lesson number one that I learned, always make sure your print bed is level. I found that if your print bed isn't level, the bottom bit of the part that you're printing won't print properly and will be a little bit oversized. This required a lot of sanding and a lot of filing to get the correct shape and proper fitment. The second lesson I learned is to never print all the pieces at once unless you know your design is fully complete. A lot of material was wasted on printing extra bearings before I got the design to work perfectly. The third and final lesson that I had learned is to make sure you don't allow your animals, specifically a cat, to jump on the print bed as the printer is working. Now that the design portion was complete, it was time to print and then assemble all the pieces. I don't really feel the need to talk through this part, so cue the intense background music. Cause I can't see
Unfortunately, while recording the part that I showed the actual device, my neighbor turned on their lawnmower and I lost most of my audio, so I had to do a voiceover for this part. The first step to putting the string on is to tie it to the end, and then wrap a cord from each end to the hook and back around. You have to do this for every single hook. Once all the ends are hooked around, tie it so that it's one solid piece at the end, and then tie the weight to the end of it. I used a sturdy pipe wrench as a weight. It seemed to be about the right weight, and I didn't feel like looking for anything else. Once everything is set up, you have to add the slider. The slider keeps the strings in place and keeps them from twisting around each other in an improper way. There should be about four inches between the slider and where it's starting to twist the string together. Most professionally made rope is twisted counterclockwise, however in this video I twisted clockwise because I wasn't paying attention. As the rope starts to twist around itself, it'll start to move a little bit closer. However, you always need to make sure to keep the slider at the same spot relative to where the rope is twisting. It should slide forward on its own without need to move it. Just hold constant pressure. Once the string has been made, you have to put a piece of tape around each end to hold it. Once you have it properly tightened and stretched, you can cut the string without tape. For better detail, I added a closer view of the string being produced. Being my first video, I found that there was quite a learning curve with the editing software. However, in the future I look forward to the improvement that comes along. If you liked the video, like and subscribe. Offer suggestions in the comments for improvement, and I'll see you next time on Practical Printing 3D.